I'm Stuart Cleland for Rotary International News. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rotary Club of the Bridgewater's 50th anniversary celebration. I'm Terry Humphreys and I've been lucky enough to be a member of this club and Rotary for the past 40 years. During that time I have been president twice and with the club's backing and support district governor for District 7950 during the Rotary year 2009-2010. Because of my seniority and years of service, not age, because I'm still a young guy, I get to be the MC. I would like to thank Ed Meany and Justimiano Alves for putting this virtual presentation together. Like other clubs and organizations, we had chosen a date which we had to change and again we were met with another postponement. It was agreed to make this a virtual celebration and complete it in our 50th year. We had to explain this step to our sponsors and the club. They backed us 100%, thus making the funds we raise still available to all the projects we contribute to. The program booklets are still being printed and are available to anyone that requests a copy. Our sponsors for this event are North End Motors from Canton, major sponsor. Algar Construction from Brockton, major sponsor. McMullen Tax from Brockton, event sponsor. Salon Esprit, event sponsor. These sponsors, along with the many companies and individuals who took out ads and our patron listings, will make this celebration successful monetarily and again we can contribute or continue our support in school scholarships, food pantries, community and international projects. Thank you. We will open this celebration as we do our regular meeting. However, we will do it in most cases from the home of the individuals taking part. The first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Kathy Giannunzio is our club treasurer and has lived in a rotary atmosphere for quite a while. She will be doing the pledge in memory of her father, Robin Red Patane, one of the founders of this club and well known in the district as a caring individual and a district flagman extraordinaire for 30 plus for 30 years plus. Kathy. In memory of my father, Red Bertain, a dedicated Rotarian for 46 years and a founding member of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kathy. We will now have the song, God Bless America, in memory of another founder, Dr. V. James Donato, who was also a district governor for District 7950. Beth Rolls Smith, past president and club Rotarian of the year 2015, will lead us in this arrangement. Beth, would you please start? The singing of God Bless America by Irving Berlin will be performed in memory of Dr. V. James DiNardo, who served as a past district governor of our Rotary District 7950, our Bridgewaters Club president, and as songmaster extraordinaire. Jim retired from his career in education as executive vice president of Bridgewater State University. We are happy to have Betty Galligan, current president of the 74-year-old East Providence Seekonk Rotary Club perform her rendition of God Bless America. Betty has been a Rotarian since 2002 
serving as president twice and been involved in committee work on the district level for many years, including being a co-host of the We Are Rotary radio show on AM 790. She graduated from R Rhode Island College with a double major in theater and communications and has performed as lead singer and keyboardist in two local rock bands since 1989, including currently in the band Full Circle. While she's not performing for, when she's not performing for, for nursing homes outdoors during the COVID-19 crisis, she is president of Newberry Public Relations and Marketing in East Providence, which she established in 1997. She resides in Riverside, Rhode Island with her husband, Mike, and their African gray parrot named Einstein, who has over 600 followers on Instagram. The club thanks Betty for singing for us on this momentous occasion. God bless America. Land that I love Stand beside her And guide her Through the night with the light from above From the mountains To the prairies To the oceans Wide with foam God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you, Beth for arranging this tribute and Betty for your participation. Giving our invocation will be Mohammed Aki Pawaz, past president and presently assistant governor for Area 6, which includes his home club of the Bridgewaters, Abington, Brockton, Rockland Hanson, and Stoughton. He is a well-respected businessman in the community representing North End Motors in Canton. A key, please. Thank you, and I am very proud and honored to do the invocation for the 50th anniversary of the Bridgewaters Rotary Club. In the name of the Lord, the gracious, ever merciful, bless us, O Lord, with these thy gifts. Prosper us in our labor and grant that we may become true and loyal Rotarians, exemplifying the object of Rotary in our services to our communities and families. Lord, we acknowledge Thee as the creator and sustainer of all life. We look to Thee for meaning and fulfillment to life. O oh Lord, thank you for bringing us together under the banner of Rotary. And thank you for making a way with this technology to continue with our 50th anniversary celebration and not letting our efforts go in vain. Bless this 50th anniversary celebration of the Bridgewaters Rotary Club and bless those members of the Weymouth Rotary Club who help initiate this wonderful, loving, caring Rotary Club. Thank you for our members of the past and whom that are present today and our sponsors who helped make this event a success. O oh Lord, bless our club president, Bruce Marquis, with health and wellness, as we are thankful for his leadership and his efforts. O oh Lord, thank you for the wonderful Rotarians all around the world and our understanding you as one creator for the entire universe with one race as human, 
and one religion of love for all mankind and animals, and one purpose of service above self. O Lord, I supplicate you to grant us your love and the love of those who love you and the actions which may lead us to win your love. Lord, open up our hearts and increase our understandings of service above self. Amen. And I thank you again, and God bless you all. Thank you, Aki, for those thoughts and prayers. We certainly need them during the coronavirus and explosive situation the world finds itself in because of the death of one of its citizens. Dr. Michael Krasanek, who is our vice president, will recite what we call the object of rotary. As you listen to the four verses, it will give you an idea of what the Rotary Organization is all about and its mission. Mike, if you would. Hello, my name is Mike Krasanek and I'm the Vice President of the Rotary of the Bridgewaters. And I've been asked today to tell you a little bit about the object of Rotary and how we in the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters have over the 50 years of our, of our service have, have worked very successfully to achieve these objectives. So bear with me now as, we, as I go through the, uh, uh, the, the formal statement that has been part of Rotary for, for many, many years. The object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise. And in particular, to encourage and foster, number one, the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. Number two, high ethical standards in business and professions the recognition of worthiness of all useful occupations and dignifying of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve society. Three, the application of the ideal of service in each Rotarian's personal, business, and community life. And four, the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace to a world fellowship of business and professional persons united in the ideal of service. As you can see, service is a very, very important part of what we and the Rotary and the Bridgewaters and again, other clubs throughout the nation and the world do. And I know we have uh, uh, successfully achieved that over the years here in the Rotary. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn over to the others who are gonna be telling you other parts of uh, the Rotary and our 50th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for reminding us all about what the object of this great organization is. In addition to the object of Rotary is a personal objective for all Rotarians and others who can and do abide by it. We call it Rotary's four-way test. Deborah Tennant, who was president-elect, also secretary, and was district administrative assistant for her husband, Bill Tennant, district governor, 2018-2019. We look forward to her leadership in the incoming year. Deb, if you would please. A four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerns? Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendship? And number four, Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Deb. And the club membership looks forward to working with you and for you in the upcoming Rotary year. We'll now have a word from the District Governor, Stephen Albright. The District Governor is just finishing up his year. And as he states, even though we ran into the COVID-19 virus, in mid-match, and we all had to change our programs and plans for the last quarter. It has been a great year. If I continue on about his year, I'll be stealing his thunder, so a little rotary background, and then we will get
give him the floor. Steve has been a member of the Yarmouth Mass Rotary Club since 2008. He has served as a director, club president, trustee, and vice president and president of the Yarmouth Rotary Foundation. In 2010, he was named the Yarmouth Rotarian of the Year for his service to the club and the Rotary Foundation, and 2018 was given the Spirit of Service Award for his outstanding leadership and dedication to the ideals of Rotary by the Yarmouth Rotary Club. Steve is currently a Paul Harris Fellow plus four. On the district level, he has been on the district budget committee, finance committee, nominating committee, district grant committee, and youth exchange committee, currently inbound chair. He and his wife Jill have been a youth exchange host family for the past six years. Steve served as an assistant governor for Area 1 from 2015-2018. District Governor Steve, it's all yours. Greetings, I am Steve Albright, the District Governor for Rotary District 7950, and I am honored to be a part of the virtual celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters. On behalf of Rotary International President Mark Daniel Maloney, President-elect Holger Knapp, and myself, I would like to congratulate the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters for their 50 years of outstanding service to Rotary, the world, and their community. Chartered on April 15, 1970, your club has played an important role by providing scholarships, supporting Father Bills, supporting literacy with your dictionary project for third graders, supporting local organizations like the Brockton Veterans Hospital, local food pantries, the Soup Man, the Concert on the Common, in addition, you have supported Polio Plus for the eradication of polio from the world. Shelter Box, you have promoted peace by supporting a Rotary Peace Fellow from your own club. And most recently, you have supported a vocational training team of teachers from South Africa that come to the United States. Unfortunately, this had to be postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but we in the district are all hoping that it will happen shortly. During the 50 years of service, the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters has always exemplified the Rotary motto, service above self. And we are all very proud and we thank you for your great contributions to the world and your community. On behalf of Rotary International President Mark Daniel Maloney and myself, I would like to present the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters with a certificate honoring the 50 years of membership in the greatest service organization of the world, Rotary International. I congratulate all of you and I thank you for allowing me to be part of this great celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, District Governor Steve, for an interesting talk and the presentation of the 50th certificate. Next on our agenda is a brief history of the club and who could do it better than Dr. Edward Meany, past president, who was also responsible for the video depicting many members in club events. Thank you for that, Ed. Please give us your account of the club's history. Okay, thank you, Terry, very much. I have been asked to provide a brief history of the Bridgewater's Rotary Club. 50 years, long time, hard to be brief with all the accomplishments of this year. But I'm going to try and do my best because uh, time requires that I do. <laughs> Our club had its start back in 1969 when a member of the Abington Rotary Club contacted uh, the president of the Weymouth Rotary Club that gentleman by the name of Ken Hansen, and asked about the feasibility of establishing a club, a Rotary Club for the Bridgewater. The district governor then was contacted and initiated a committee which identified 23 individuals. And that became the group 
our charter members that established the club. And on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, they elected Edmund Godin as club president, our first president. Club was granted its charter on April 15th, 1970. And our charter night was celebrated at Ritter's Country Club on May 27th, 1970. We had an excellent turnout, a lot of representatives from service organizations, both to all the Bridgewaters as well as Erie. The meeting places has varied. We started meeting at Snow Lodge, which uh, was located at the center of Bridgewater, no longer exists. And then <clears throat> we moved to American Legion Hall later that year, and then eventually over to Standish Grill. In 72, we moved once again over to Anthony's Charcoal Pit. We would stay there until 84. Then we switched back to the Standish Grill. We remained there at Standish Grill until 2002 and then moved to the Good Days Restaurant in West Bridgewater, where we continued to meet until the pandemic uh, took effect and we are now meeting virtually via Zoom. Um, we continue to meet on Wednesdays as we consistently have since our formation, but originally we were a noontime club meeting at 12.15. We are now a morning club meeting at 7.30 a.m. So, that's the only difference as far as meeting times and date, but we have moved to a lot of uh, locations. Membership has fluctuated. We started with 23, we went down to 17. The 80 saw a fairly stable membership between 25 and 30 members. And then <clears throat> we uh, saw a drop in the late 80s and early 90s of membership going down to 17 and below. Then once we uh, reached uh, uh, 2010, we uh, started to grow again. And uh, by uh, 2017, we had uh, <clears throat> hit another economic uh, depression, recession, take your pick, and we started to lose members. But today, we're strong again. We're back to 22 members. We're evenly divided between men and women and we're much more diverse than we were back when we were founded in 1970. We have a lot of dynamic individuals. It's uh, more young individuals and women uh, who have uh, added a new vitality to our club. And we all appreciate everyone's effort and contribution. The community support that our club has given is great. We have done many different things to help our community become a better place to live and to recognize uh, the heroes that live among them. <clears throat> some of the things that we've done, and this is just a brief synopsis of some. Our first uh, big thing was in 1972, the club purchased a used sawmill and shipped it to Father Greg Schaefer's mission in Guatemala, where it was greatly needed. The club also began made a donation to the Bridgewater Library for the purchase of a big dictionary. <clears throat> and then it also in 73 sponsored a Mr. Fit program. Uh, it began in also in 73, its first community service awards with three awards the first year. And then increasing that number to six in 74. The club also sent one child to Wild Y Camp and another one to the Boy Scout Camp. In the 75 to 80 period, the club settled on three community service awards, <clears throat> which has now expanded to five. One for each one of the area high schools, including our two vocational schools that students from our communities attend. We've also donated in, in the 75, 76, we provided rent, a month's rent for a, a needy family in one of the Bridgewaters. We made a $200 do donation to a, a New England Academy in East Bridgewater. 
<clears throat> in 78, we made donations to the visiting nurses uh, and uh, Little Home for Wanderers, and we established and distributed a Medi Alert program for the um, three communities. The big project for the 80 was the elimination of polio. And uh, we made uh, fundraisers, we self-assessed and donated ourselves as members. The, our participation was the best in our district. We received recognition for the effort, financial effort by the club members. We continue to hold tag days, donations, uh, for seeking donations to eliminate polio. And this effort has continued through to this day. We also supported uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. We provided uh, a, you know, the continued support of the Community Service Award. We supported Handy Kids, United Way. Uh, we supported all of our public libraries, Brockton Multi Centers, the uh, Bridgewater Food Pantry, uh, American Diabetes Literacy Projects in, in South Africa, as well as locally. <clears throat> And we started uh, the Dictionary Project, which um, provides dictionaries to all third graders in the three Bridgewaters. And uh, we initiated, uh, under the direction of our past president, Bruce Marquis, the Citizen of the Year Award, in which we recognize those citizens among us who are really making a difference in our community our unsung heroes, that's what they are. And come this year, the 21st year of our Citizen of the Year Award, we will be awarding and for East Bridgewater a memorial uh, award on behalf of East Bridgewater, which will be called the Bruce Marquis Citizen of the Year Award. Uh, <clears throat> we also continue uh, supporting our uh, different uh, organizations, the Easter Seals, um, Little League Baseball, Natural Resources Trust. We sponsored uh, uh, concerts uh, in West Bridgewater, also in Bridgewater. We've uh, uh, helped with the literacy uh, in South Africa. Uh, and uh, we've worked on wheelchair projects, raising money, and also shelter boxes to help. And recently, we've added helping support veteran services, community beautification, and support for local homeless shelters and food banks. Fundraising, where do we get that money to, to do all these things? We get it from ourselves, and we get it from many businesses within the community who are kind enough to recognize us and willing to support what we're trying to do for our community. So our sponsors deserve great credit and we certainly appreciate it. And <clears throat> we conduct many activities to raise those funds. In the past, we've done pancake breakfast, steak and chicken barbecues, million dollar meals, spaghetti dinners, pig roasts, uh, flea markets, Super Bowl parties, um, Rotarian of the Year. Uh, we've even seen two of our members, first, first Fran Jeffries, and then she, this past year, she was joined by Janet Dye, who are willing to dip into Dorchester Bay to raise funds for Rotary and other charities. And we certainly appreciate their sacrifice I don't think I'd be going to that cold water, but they do it every New Year's Day, and I my hat is off to them and their effort, and we appreciate it, and everybody we help appreciates what they do, as well as everybody else who willingly supports uh, many of the activities that uh, our club undertakes and Rhode International. This club has continued to support our youth through service scholarships, continue to recognize the unsung heroes and uh, support for uh, food banks, volunteered in many areas, homeless shelters, uh, provide necessary clothing for homeless shelters, and provide educational supplies to schools 
here and, uh, and worldwide. And <clears throat> we continue to fight to uh, the elimination of polio throughout the world. We are Rotarians who are proud to play service above self as our personal model, as well as Rotary's model. We are ready to serve our communities for the next 50 years as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed, for that walk down memory lane. Each time the club has a birthday, we think of the club that sponsored us back in 1970. On this special occasion, past president and assistant governor, Aki Pavaraz, will give this tribute to the Weymouth Rotary Club and its present president, Lois Struckman. Whenever you are ready, thank you, Aki. Thank you, and I am honored to present this award. It goes back to 1969, 1970, our Bridgewater Rotary Club was sponsored by another vibrant Rotary Club in our district of 7950. It takes a lot of work, time and determination to bring a group of people together with the understanding of service above self and willingness to uphold and say and do the things that does not violate the forward test. When there was no technology or the ease of connecting around the globe, we're fortunate that there was a group of people among the Weymouth Rotary Club and the three Bridgewaters that took part in developing another vibrant club. And it is my honor to recognize the Weymouth Rotary Club and present this trophy to the current president, Lois Strokeman, the president of the Weymouth Rotary Club for its sponsorship of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters and celebrating our 50th anniversary. We are thankful and we are forever grateful and God bless you. Good evening. Thank you, Aki. We are very happy to be presented this trophy. I am Lois Struckman, president of the Rotary Club of Weymouth. We are honored to accept this as a trophy on behalf of our club. We are very proud that members before our time had the vision to sponsor your great club. Congratulations again for 50 years of service above self to your community and the world. Tonight I am joined by Steve Serta, past district governor and past president, Jim Cavanaugh, our president-elect, and Joe Clancy, past district governor and past president as well in our club. And Joe, why don't you start with some words for the Rotary, for the Club of Good. Bridgewater. Well, thank you very much, uh, President Lois. I want to congratulate the incredible uh, Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters. You have been a, one of the most uh, friendliest, welcoming clubs We've had the occasion to visit over the years. You've been a great friend of Weymouth, a great friend to your own communities, and especially so many great members over the years. And I'd just like to uh, thank uh, uh, Bruce McKee for all his uh, help to me personally. Every time I had a question or uh, some uh, needed advice, I knew I'd always get a straight, a straight answer from Bruce. So thank you, Bruce, and of course, Terry and Ed and all the gang. So. Congratulations, you've had a great 50 years. Look forward to another 50, you've done so much for your community. So thank you very much and thank you for allowing me to participate, President Lois. Absolutely, and uh, Steve Serta. And congratulations to the Bridgewaters for your 50th anniversary. Congratulations to Bruce, uh, Key, Deb, Terry, and all the rest of the members of the club. Uh, you've done great work both locally for the community and internationally. Uh, currently, you have a vocational training team working with uh, family literacy in South Africa. And you're, for a small club, you had two district governors. Uh, congratulations, and I hope to be with you 50 years again from now. Good luck. And Jim Cavanaro. Congratulations again to the Bridgewater Club. As we look forward to a new year, we hope to see you in person soon and continue the great work that you've done in Rotary. You're an aspiration for us, and we're proud to be associated with you. With you, Thank you. Let me echo at the end here, of course, congratulations again. And to President Bruce Marquis and his entire Bridgewater team for all the great work they're doing and continue onward for the next 50 years. We are all looking forward to seeing you then. Congratulations. Good night.
Thank you, Aki, and thank you, Lois, for being part of the club's tribute to the Weymouth Club. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize our charter members. I will list those individuals that came together to start the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters 50 years ago. Some of you, I'm sure, will recognize the names and businesses. The charter members of Bridgewaters Rotary Club. Charles Adams, agent for the Farm Bureau Insurance Service. Graham Arnold, manager, Bridgewater Equipment Company. Jay Azak, owner, Jay's Playland. Dana Asworth, staff assistant, Foxborough Company. John Berry, superintendent, Brockton Edison Company. Richard Betancourt, owner and president, Betancourt Machine Company. Red Batane, president, Toll Road Equipment Company. Freeman Davison, Jr., Davison Real Estate. Past District Governor V. James Donato, executive vice president, Bridgewater State College. Harold Estabrook, treasurer. Charlatan Insurance Agency. Everett Estabrook, cattle dealer, Windy Ridge Farm. Jerome Fletcher, attorney. Edmund Godin, president, Pyro Products Incorporated. Gregory Godin, director, International Pyrotechnics. Albert Reiner, Inspector of Wires, City of Brockton. Paul Latola, Farm. World's End Farm. Robert Mayhew, Northeast Director, Heifer Project Incorporated. James Rogers, Postmaster. Andrew Vavalotis, Business Owner. Dwight Weir, President, Beauty Farm Plasters Incorporated. Basil Warren, Inspector, Farm Bureau. Henry Werner, Administrative Assistant, Bridgewater State College. Howard Washam, Owner, Valet Cleaners. We were able to make contact with a, uh, a couple of the uh, founders. Uh, Charlie Adams moved to uh, the Middleborough Club in about three or four years and from there I went to Yarmouth and has been a member there since and his wife Barbara is also a member. Hal Lesterbrook, uh, we had made contact with him and uh, he was going to spin a yarn if we had our regular uh, celebration about yarn about naming the club. There was quite a discussion I guess. And Andy Vavalotis, I was able to make contact with him. And he wrote a letter back to me. Yeah. It says, Dear Terry, nice to hear from you. Great memories rekindled of my time with the Bridgewater's Rotary Club. Congratulations to you for attaining the position of District Governor. In the late 1960s, a friendly old gent came to visit me at my place of business and introduced me to the great work of Rotary International. As he wrapped up his presentation, I asked him how much he would like for a donation. He responded by saying he didn't want my money. He wanted me to join a new Rotary Club being formed in the Bridgewaters. I was honored to join the club and work with many people doing great work. A major project during my presidency was Project Directory, a telephone directory of the Bridgewaters. At the time it seemed like a straightforward project but took a lot of sales work to sell the ads and lay them out in the directory. In addition, a lot of work was required to pull together all the names and telephone numbers of the residents and businesses of the Bridgewaters. 
I also recall work. Uh, I also recall working the club had done uh, work the club had done for the heifer project. Recalling some of the charter members and subsequent members as follows: Red Batain, Paul Latola, J. Azak, Al Griner, Stanley Kravitz, Roger Hansen, and Jim Donato. Rotor was a great experience for me, and being a Paul Harris Fellow was my opportunity to give back for all I was given. I regret that I shall not be able to join you all on the 50th anniversary celebration. On the other hand, I am very happy that the club appears vibrant and continuing to do good works. All the best, Andy. That's the group that got us going. Tom Kazanowski, past president, will now recognize the presidents that took the reins each year and helped establish the club as we know it today. Tom, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at this time, whether it's afternoon or evening. We have a different presentation for our 50th anniversary. We're getting together and, uh, because of uh, circumstances outside of our control on a video presentation. My task this evening is to present our past presidents of our club. Starting back 50 years ago, our first president, Edmund J. Godin, 1970 through 1971, followed by Basil S. Warren in 71 through 72, Following Basil, Albert A. Grenier, 1972 through 73, followed by Don H. Burgess in 73 through 74, followed by Robin Red Bertain in 74 through 75, following Red was Stanley Kravitz in 75 through 76. Following him was Andrew C. Vavalotis in 76 through 77. Next on the list is Robert E. Capon, 1977 through 78, followed by Paul S. Latola in 78 through 79. Following Paul was Russ, Russell E. Ball, that was 1979 through 80, and followed by John F. Rogers in 1980 through 81. Next was Dr. V. James Donato in 1981 through 82, followed by Eldon T. Standing for Terry Humphreys Jr. in 1982 through 83. Ed Widjay Meany followed him through 83 84. Michael J. Ward in 84 through 85, and you'll see a recurring theme here. Albert M. Grenier came back and did a second term as president in 85-86. He was the first. Followed by Peter H. Safaris in 86 through 87. Following him was Robert D. McHale from 1987 through 88. Followed by G. Lawson Clark, 1988 through 89. Following him was Kenneth E. Borkland from 89 through 90. Followed by John L. Swistak in 1990 through 91. Uh, in 1991 through 92, we had Thomas W. Banks. Followed by Thomas. McBride in 92 and 93. In 93 through 94, E. Diane Pacheco was our president. Following her in 94 through 95, Robert P. Preston. After Robert, we had Eldon Terry Humphreys Jr. back for second term in 95 through 96 followed by Paul S. Latola doing his second term, as did Edward G. J. Meany do a second term in 97 through 98. Our first two consecutive 
term president was Thomas G. Warren, my first president, uh, for the years 1998 through 2000. Following Tom was Stephen J. Kelly from 2000 to 2001, followed by Francis M. Jeffries in 2002 through 2003, Beth Roll Smith. Following Beth was Bruce E. Marquis. In 2004 through 2005, Paul Gendro. 2005 through 6, Beth Roll Smith made a second appearance as our president. In 2006 through 2008, we had a two consecutive term president, Patricia Lee. Following her for a second time was Frances M. Jeffries doing her second term. In 2009-2010, I served as President Thomas Kazanowski. Following me was 2010 through 11, Kevin Inkley. And the subsequent year, I returned 2011 through 2012. And another two-term Consecutive term president came in, Kevin J. Burley from 2012 through 14. Uh, followed next by Janet Dye in 2014 through 2015. James Alfieri in 15 through 16. Arki Poaz in 2016 through 17. Jim Alfieri returned as president in 2017 through 2018. Mark Lindy served as our president 2018 through 2019 and appearing a second time and serving as president this year, just finishing up, Bruce E. Marquis. And that is, that is our list of presidents past. Thank you for your attendance. Tom, thank you for recognizing those individuals who along with all the members provided the continuity over the years. It appears we are near the end of our program. Our closing remarks will be given by Dr. Edward Meany, past president. Thank you, Terry. I have been asked to deliver the concluding remarks for this 50 year celebration event. Our late club president, Bruce Marquis, asked me to deliver these closing remarks in his place. At the time we were on the phone, it was my last conversation with him. He informed me that he was physically unable to do it. That decision by Bruce, which I knew he wanted to be here in the most important way, indicated that he was having a very difficult battle with his disease. We lost Bruce to his cancer, but we didn't lose his spirit to do good. Bruce was always focused upon having our club do well for our communities. Bruce was always focused on how we can improve our club and attract new members. He worked tirelessly at this mission, even when he was in severe pain from his cancer. At many of our morning meetings, <clears throat> he would try to hide the pain he was experienced and provide a facade of all is well. He would express concern for others, asking how they were dealing with their illnesses, but never complaining about his own situation. Rotary will miss Bruce. Our communities will miss his outlook and his commitment to make a difference. I will miss a friend and a colleague. Of course, his wife, Lucy, and their children, Bruce Jr. and Tim, have suffered the greatest loss, and our hearts and sympathy go out to them. Thank you, Bruce, for all you did and for all you inspired. Our club has always been small, 
in size, but ranging from membership of 23 to 10 or 11 members, and then back up to 25, but never over 30. The size of our membership has never stopped or slowed down the group of individuals that have been members of this organization. The heart of this club has always been great and the effort to make a difference has never diminished regardless of the number of members. The club has produced leaders who have helped the club make a difference in our communities, in our region, and in the world. Two district governors, district officers, literacy and scholarship committee members, district newsletter editors, representatives, and many other district leadership positions have been filled by our club members. Our club could not have accomplished as much as we have without the support of the many individuals and corporations within our community. They have stepped forward to financially support our events, which enable us to meet the varied needs of our three communities. I want to specifically thank this evening's major sponsors, Alger Construction and North End Motors for their continued financial support to our club. Additionally, Salon Spree and Joseph J. McMullen, the tax man, also helped to make this evening possible. Over the past 50 years, many others have contributed financially to assist us in achieving our club's goal. Most importantly, I wanna also thank the members of my committee that planned this event, including Terry Humphreys, Beth Smith, Aki Pawaz, Tom Kazanowski, and of course, our late club president, Bruce McKee. And finally, I want to thank the men and women of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters who have willingly given their time, effort, and their money to make it possible for this club to serve others and to put into action Rotary's motto, service above self. We look forward to serving for another 50 years. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, Ed, and thank you to our sponsors, and thank you, everyone, for being part of our 50th anniversary celebration. We're adjourned. <laughs>